Good morning again. <clears throat> on this second Sunday of Advic, um, focusing on the sermonic theme of casting parts, casting parts, casting roles. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this season that is unfolding before us. Dear Lord, as we gather together, some in social media spots and some here and some who will join later, keep us as a community. Help us to hear the words, help us to be inspired, and help us to live our lives fully, walking in the light. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Seems like I got a little something going on there. Okay, I'll deal with that later. Jerry Mitchell a journalist recalls in 1988 watching Mississippi Burning, a fiction story inspired by a true story about three civil rights activists who were abducted and murdered. In that movie screening, he learned from an FBI agent that was sitting next to him that many of the perpetrators of, civil rights, of the civil rights era were walking free and living as if nothing had happened. Jerry says he had no peace about that. The thing that bothered him for days and months is that these people got away with killing another human being. And what made it so horrific is that everyone knew what they had done, even the victims of the family, that these men had gotten away with murder and were living their lives as though nothing had happened all the injustice at its heights. He began to investigate, and as a white male, he used his white male privilege for some good. He used it to obtain secret files and get an interview with the murderer of Megger Evans. He interviewed Brian de la Beckwith for six hours, and after they finished the interview, Brian walks him to the car and blocks his entry. He says a couple of words and then he looks him dead in his eye and says, if you write negative things about white Caucasian Christians, God will punish you. If God does not punish you directly, several individuals will do it for him. And then he steps back, allowing Mitchell to get in his car. Mitchell wrote the article at the same time, another legislative arm of Mississippi was trying to get Beckwith acquitted. Mitchell article came out October the 1st, 1989, getting this case reopened after 30 years. The second week of Advent, we are talking about peace. We have looked at many angles of peace over the year, but perhaps peace is what comes to us. Perhaps peace is what is delivered to us when we respond to the issues and concerns of our time that disrupt our sleep, that disturb us. When we figure how are we going to respond to what is happening right on our streets and in our world. When what is happening on our block and in our community is room for pause. When indifference does not claim us as its own. Maybe peace is looking evil in the eye and not being okay with it. Maybe peace is deciding we will be part of the solution and not by silence a part of the problem. One man after watching a disturbing movie decides he has to do something. This is where we enter the biblical text today, looking out at John. John got casted as the one to announce the arrival of Jesus. He was the one that got to play that role, that part. In other words, prior to Jesus' ministry or prior to Jesus coming, John is to let folks know there's this bad dude who is about to disturb the water, upset the status quo, and shake things up around here. You ain't ready for him. You think you are, but you all really are not ready for him. This guy is bad, and John got to be casted in the role to prepare the people for Jesus coming. John got to make the announcement. He got to put something on people's mind about what was to come. 
Now, John was a little bit aggressive in his approach. John had an audience because the community was ready for something new. This community was ready for something different. Just as John had a role to play in the preparation of the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have a role to play. We have a part. And our role, it's important. This past Wednesday was World AIDS Day. Back in the 90s, I can remember being new to this city. I was interning at a rough school on the west side of Chicago, and I had to take a couple of buses to get all the way from High Park to the west side. And there was this one guy who lived south who would sometimes give me a ride home after we had worked at the school. We were broke and poor, but we had such a wonderful time on our car rides together. Anthony was a unique individual and kids would gravitate towards him in the school. He just had this natural charisma about him. But Anthony had a secret. Anthony was living in the closet. As a devout black Christian, it wasn't safe for him to be out. But he wasn't the only one, of course we know, not even today. Lots more were also living in the closet especially, especially in the church. Anthony eventually did come out. I later learned that Anthony had AIDS and Anthony danced at my ordination service fully out and fully AIDS. Anthony died a few years later. His non-supportive family was there, but you know who really showed up for Anthony's home going? The progressive community of faith who were not threatened by his sexuality and saw it among a rainbow of color, he gifted us with his presence. It was one of the most wonderful homegoing service as a dancer. People paraded down the aisles, his dance troupe. I wished he could have been there. And deep down, I wondered if um, Anthony knew how much he was loved. That service was off the chain and Reverend Jeremiah Wright officiated it. And it was just so beautiful. It was such a celebration of life. We were carrying his spirit of celebration forward. But Anthony and so many more of the LGBTQ community were able to come out because of activists, because somebody played a role, because somebody thought it was important because some bodies were not okay with the way that the LGBTQ community was being treated. We are on the brink in our country of going backwards on many issues that are important to most of us in this congregation. Our country has been teetering for a while. We have fought too hard to get where we are right now. The Civil Rights song says, I ain't going to let nobody, what, turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. I'm going to keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up freedom's road. Ain't going to let closed doors turn me around. Ain't going to let bigotry turn me around. Ain't going to let the right turn me around. We have a role to play. God is still casting parts, and all of us, all of us are needed. All of us, not some of us, have a part to play. As progressive Christians, we are excited about the work that Reverend Wei Jin is doing to make our church officially a safe space for the entire spectrum of the LGBTQI community. As progressive Christians, we know exactly what Black Lives Matter means, and we don't need to qualify it with All Lives Matter, because when we have figured out how to really honor the lives of those at the very bottom, we will have covered all of humanity. As progressive Christians, we know that until we honor the foundation of our country built on destroying the indigenous people and enslaving Africans, racism is a weed we cannot uproot. And we know that all of us, all of us have been immigrants beside the indigenous folks. So if we want to send folks home, let's start there. As progressive Christians, we know that there is room for religious tolerance, but we can do better There is room for different paths that lead to people being better human beings, 
and learning how to get along. We have to learn how to live together on earth or earth is just gonna spit us out. Anything worthwhile, really worthwhile, takes work and time. And peace, real peace, takes effort and it takes time. We can be all a part of preparing the way for a more just, humane society to emerge. We all have a part. We all have a role in the choir. Speaking of choirs, the Chicago Children's Choir, which began during the height of the Civil Rights era and brags about having 4,500 students, kids, pupils in their choirs, came together when tensions were high. It started right here in High Park, and they felt disturbed. They felt they had no peace, and this is how they responded with a vision of bringing kids across barriers together through music. And one of their songs that they sing that an alumni wrote that is apropos to today's message is, I close my eyes to the violence. I close the window to hatred. I will stand tall and sing my song and shut the door behind me. We can move forward. If united, we can't fall. This is our home. This is our home, our home. Break the barriers, tear the walls down. Yea, the time is now, cause we all live here. Stand up for your right. Darkness into light, cause we all live here. We all live here. We all live here. Watching at home, scream. Those of you that are watching, we all live here. Those of you gathered here with me, can you say, we all live here. And it takes effort and it takes time and we will upset the status quo. We may get pushback, but this understanding that we all live here undergirds us. When Jerry Mitchell published his piece on Beckwith, he began to get threats. He says when he left the interview, he was scared. His wife, eight months pregnant, begged him, stop. The home life got really tense. His wife threatened to never forgive him for what he was doing. The Klan sent him a message. Did you think we were gonna let you go unscathed? Mitchell said of all the threats, this one scared him the most. And when he went to court with Beckwith, Beckwith caught his eyes and said out loud, you see that one over there? When he dies, he's going straight to Africa. As much as Mitchell wanted to stop, as much as he wanted his family to be safe, he couldn't because his peace of mind was at stake. His wife finally gave up and said, I realize that your cases were more important than my fear. What disturbs you? What disturbs you now? What wakes you up at night? What hits you in your gut as that is wrong? What tears you apart? What are you passionate about? Where is your voice the loudest? Where is it where someone can call on you at a moment's notice and you could just talk and talk? What's wrong in our world that bothers you? What solution can you become a part of? What movement has your name all over it? What are you willing to die for? In answering some of those questions, Jerry Mitchell found peace. On February the 5th, 1994, after 30 years of living free for something everyone knows he did, the court convicted Brian De La Beckwith for the murder of, Ed, of Megger Evans. And when the world, and when the world guilty, and when the word guilty rang out, the sound cascaded down the hall, the cries of joy until it reached the open foyer of white and blacks exploding in applause. What seemed so impossible was possible. The FBI is still investigating a dozen cases, and Mitchell, through his investigative reporting, has brought 20 more clans to court. 
The widow of Vernon Dahmer, murdered after recruiting blacks to vote, called and asked Mitchell to help her with her case. A couple of years ago, I was at a festival and Yara Allen, I don't know if you guys know her, was there as a guest. And she said she could not sing alone, that she would not sing alone. And so she extended the invitation to the crowd that as many as wanted could come up and join her singing. Me with my no singing self saw this as an opportunity. Jumped out of my seat, my son looked at me again like, oh, there she goes. And up to the stage I went. Obviously there were a whole lot of other people that felt the call of the invitation and we were packed up on that stage. We got ourselves in our different parts. She gave us a few lessons and then we started to sing. And we sounded really, really good. For sure, this choir was not about the quality of voice, but the depth of heart and convictions. I'm telling you all today that you get to be a part of the choir. And it's not about singing and it's not about excellence, but it's about the depth of your heart and your convictions. We all get to be a part of the choir. Find your spot. The choir proclaims no justice, no peace. The choir sings for those who are most oppressed in our society. The choir is about the love of Jesus for all creation. We don't get to cast some out. We are all a part of this choir. We all have got a part to play. We all get to play a part in the unfolding of the baby Jesus drama. Sometimes before there is peace, there has to be shaking up that has to occur. In the struggle for justice right there in the eye of the storm is where we can find peace. Peace is what is delivered to us when we respond to the issues and concerns that disrupt our sleep and disturb us. We can sing our song, find those who are singing our note, find those who are just as passionate about issues as we are, singing with boldness and singing it loud. Even if you're off tune, clap your hands, stump your feet, proclaim your truth. We all live here. We all live here. We all live here. This is our home. This is our home, our home. Break the barriers, tear down all the walls. The time is now because we all live here. Stand up for your right. I will stand strong, you will stand strong. We will stand strong and sing our song because we all live here and we are all responsible and we all get to be a part of the choir you all have a part to play. Amen. <laughs>